Hello, my name is Alan Foom, and today I'm going to talk about petroleum traps. So this is another one in my basic primary series, which just explains some key concepts in petroleum geology. So what is a trap and why do we need them? So this is a diagram for petroleum system. So you have a source rock, uh, which, can, which has the initial hydrocarbons. The hydrocarbons that the source rock is cooked, hydrocarbons are expelled from the source rock and migrate upwards because hydrocarbons are buoyant. Eventually they will reach a reservoir rock and they will only be uh, kept within the ground if they're trapped within a hydrocarbon trap. Hydrocarbon trap has to be a positive feature because hydrocarbons are buoyant. And then you have to have a ceiling rock on top of that. So I have videos on source rocks. I have videos on ceiling rocks within my channel. So this is another one in the same series, which is now focusing on traps. So all of these things are vital. So how do traps fit into the whole uh, shebang? So we have systems, plays, and prospects. So at the top, we have a basin, which is a sedimentary basin area, which is filled with sedimentary rocks. Uh, they may contain more than one source rock or more source rocks may even not contain any source rocks at all, in which case it's game over. If it contains source rocks, you will then have a petroleum system. So petroleum system is a common hydrocarbon source rock, which may feed several plays. Uh, petroleum play is a common reservoir unit, container for the hydrocarbons. That has a defined age, stratigraphy, may have a sedimentary nature, so it could be a reef, could be a turbidite, could be deltaic sands, whatever. And this play will contain many prospects and leads. Now, a reservoir can also be fed by several different petroleum systems as well, but normally this one, key one. And then you have a trap, which is where the prospects leads and, uh, and so on come in. So prospects, individual geological features, which may or may not contain hydrocarbons. Discoveries have proven hydrocarbons. All of these things are traps which have been identified, which may or may not work. And I have a video defining what leads and prospects are as well on my channel, so please check that one out. So in terms of chance of success, these are the five main elements. Now, different companies have got them done slightly differently. Uh, you need to have a hydrocarbon source rock. That hydrocarbon source rock should generate hydrocarbons, and hydrocarbons need to migrate. You need to have a reservoir to contain the hydrocarbons, a seal to keep the trap intact, and then a trap. So today we're going to focus in on the traps. But all of these elements have to work for something to, to come together. And I have a video on my channel talking about chance of success and how that, so that works. The two main types of trap, there's uh, structural traps, which are formed by tectonic deformation. So I'll go through some of the examples in a minute. And the stratigraphic traps changed by, uh, caused by changes in rock layering. Now, this is a uh, diagram uh, from a presentation by a bloke called Brian Maxted, uh, who um, was uh, one of the founders of Cosmos, a very successful EMP company from America. And they were looking at uh, stratigraphic traps relative to structural traps. Now, back in the old days, uh, you would just drill an anticline, it would work. That's when all the giant fields were in places like Saudi Arabia, etc., were discovered. But running out of structural traps, still some exist, so some come through to new imaging. Uh, for example, this area, subsalt areas, etc., and new areas that we, we're looking at, but there are not that many of those. So, a percentage of, uh, of uh, successful discoveries of stratigraphic traps is going up, and it's now 40, 50 percent, so half and half versus what, what it was before. Stratigraphic traps are more subtle and more difficult to, to image, more difficult to define. So key concepts within the trap. So here we have uh, an anticlinal trap, and I'll come to that in a second. And here we have a contour map. So that's the crest, and that's going downhill. This is the uh, area saddled between these two hills. Uh, these two hills is the spill point where hydrocarbons would spill out and then would go up, up there. Um, then you have a contact, which is where, which is the interface between hydrocarbon-bearing rock and water-bearing rock. And the contact will not necessarily be at the spill point. There's quite a lot of discussion about that within the geophysics and geological community. Some people say that, well, you just haven't got a spill point mapped out. Others say that there are the limitations, particularly in terms of seals. Um, it's an ongoing discussion. And the relief is the uh, height between the crest of the trap, top of the hill, and the spill point. And the column height is between the crest of the trap and the hydrocarbon water contact. So these are some key concepts within structural traps. Stratigraphic traps are similar in terms of crests and uh, contacts and spill points, etc. But they also have another element within them, which I'll come to in a minute. So simplest trap um, is the anticline. So that's effectively is a fold. 
So here you have the top of the crest, and here you have uh, going down dip towards the blue, which potentially could be where the spill point is. And this is a section running through here through here. So the um, yellow is sand, or could also be limestone. Red is the hydrocarbon bearing rock, yellow is the water bearing rock, and the brown is the seal. So anticlines can be caused by tectonic compression, so effectively squeeze. Or it could be by younger sediment draping over a basement high, or a salt pillow, a mobile shale pillow, etc. There are also buried hills, and uh, which may act as a focus for um, sediment to drape over. And the main key thing here is it's dipping in all four directions, so it's known as four-way dip. That makes it simpler because there are fewer things to go wrong. Next type of trap is tilted fault blocks. These are quite common in the North Sea, some parts of the Gulf of Mexico. So this is what I basically grew up mapping. So you have a, this is a uh, contour map. So this is the fault down dipping this way and again, dipping this way. So in this case, you get three way dip, although you have multiple, you can have multiple faults. You can have two way dip, etc. So it could be more complicated than that. This is a relatively simple one. Look at a section. This is the upthrown side. This is the downthrown side. This is the fault. Now you have an extra element of risk here. How sealing is your fault? If you've got sand on sand across, maybe some something would leak out. Uh, fault rocks tend to be deformed uh, relative to obviously non non faulted rocks. So again, could be a point of weakness here. Uh, probably still likely to work, but it's a point of weakness. Next type of trap is a downthrown fault side. So again, you have a similar scenario. You have a fault here. You're now looking at the downthrown side. Now the key here thing here is a key risk is the fault seal risk because you're dependent on this fault seal to work. And this previous uh, um, upthrown side trap, you're not so much. So again, if this fault seal fails, hydrocarbons just leak upwards, trap doesn't work. So they're a lot riskier. Doesn't mean that they don't work all the time. Sometimes they do, but they're a lot riskier. Then you have thrust related uh, place. So this is when you've got compression and this is when you have uh, a fault failure along the thrust fault. So again, this is the upthrown side of the uh, thrust fault, um, the uh, foot wall and hanging wall. Uh, you've got the reservoir, you've got a seal, and you've got the fault. So hydrocarbons in here. This is a thrust fault with thrust fault symbols and this is dipped this way. So again, um, it's relatively simple compared to some other traps and can get reached quite high volumes. There's also another set of uh, thrust related traps which are since sedimentary. So this is in uh, deltas where you have a lot of sediment being deposited very quickly and the sediment can't be accommodated. So it effectively starts rolling up like a rug. So those are called toe thrusts. Again, quite common in Nigeria, Mozambique and a few other places in the world. We have strike strip related faults. Now these tend to be very complicated. So this is a block diagram of Wikipedia. So this is a section, you've got a strike slip fault where Basically, you've got rock um, tectonic plates moving side by side uh, with a bit of uh, compression. That's called transpression. You get things called flower structures that can be quite complicated. And again, imaging them can also be on seismic, can also be a challenge. Then you have diaper related traps. Now, this is a particular case for mobile salt, also works on mobile shale. So, salt behaves like, can behave like plastic, rock salt halite, and it can float under high pressure. So, they effectively start forming a um, what is called a diapier, which effectively punches through uh, the sediment. Um, these things can be very complicated, and they're quite complicated to image on seismic. So that's where pre-stack depth migration and other advanced algorithms really help. So you have two types of traps associated with it. So you have something on top of the salt. So the schematic contour map here, that's relatively simple. Might have a bit of faulting associated with it. Um, fine, no problem. Along the side of the fault, salt uh, dome, that's a lot more complicated. So you have salt here, and then you have a contour map around that. These can be quite complicated. Um, extra seal, potential for seal failure here, where there's an interface between the sediment and the salt. Sometimes things don't work there. Can you image it properly, etc.? Can have quite large volumes, but pretty complicated and need to extra work to image. Now we want stratigraphic traps. So these are traps formed by changes in layering. So this is an example here is a channel. So this has been carved, channel, filled with sand in this particular case. It's going over the top of an anticline. So you've got dip here, dip here, and then side seal here. The key thing within stratigraphic traps is you have more than one seal. Structural traps, you just have to worry about the top seal. Here you have to worry about base seals and side seals. So in this particular type of trap, this side seal fails again. What could happen here? 
There's also, obviously, in most of these cases, a structural dip component. But again, can be quite complicated. But here is where seismic can really help if you've got particularly a seismic anomaly associated with it. Stratigraphic trap spin shout. Again, this is a situation where you've got a reservoir, deposition stops, you've got a top seal, you've got a base seal, spin shout, and then three way dip. So, first field I've ever worked on Everest and the North Sea is, uh, is this type of field. Again, you need a base seal. Can be difficult to image on seismic, particularly for thin reservoirs. So, you have to have a geological model. But if you have a seismic anomaly, that really helps. And that's how a lot of these things tend to get uncovered. So, some of these are uncovered by luck, some of these are uncovered by deliberate mapping. Unconformity truncation. So, you have an erosion on conformity that has a top seal on top of that. That's the reservoir hydrocarbon aquifer. A top, another second top seal and then a base seal. Again, quite complicated. Some things can go wrong, but do, it does work some of the time. And then you've got carbonate reefs and platforms. These can be really massive. So what you have is effectively a, a reef of different types of organisms form, forming limestone and dolomite. These tend to form over the top of uh, some sort of basement high. So something protrudes above the uh, protrudes within the seabed, a little bit higher, getting into the photic zone, these um, organisms start producing carbonates. Um, so, for example, could be hosts, could be an ancient volcano, etc. And some of these reefs can be quite long lived. They can go on for millions of years and keep building. For example, Karachagan and Kashagan, Kazakhstan, which I both worked on, come, come there. There are also buried hills. This is an example we have a, a carbonate platform has been eroded, and you have effectively a hill, and then it's uh, covered over by new sediment covered over by a top seal that's also a play that works so it's not particularly exhaustive um, basic primer just some of the traps that are there there are more exotic traps that are in here but here are some key points so you've got a structural trap formed by deformation of the beds after they're deposited either folding or faulting or they can drape over existing structures they're usually fairly easy to see on seismic um, I mean, there could be some complexity, particularly anything related to salt domes, which is where advised seismic algorithms help. You might have multiple targets in a single trap, and they tend to be lower risk. But there aren't that many of them left to drill. So moving on to stratigraphic traps. So this form by nature of um, changes the nature of the rocks that are layering. So that includes pinch out channels, deep sea fans, which I haven't covered here, and conformities, changes in facies caused by diagenesis, some hydrodynamic traps, which tend to be a bit more complicated. I haven't talked about those. They can be harder to see on seismic unless you've got a seismic anomaly related to potential hydrocarbon indicator, direct hydrocarbon indicator, and you need to understand the geological model. Now, some early stratigraphic traps are found by luck. So Everest, for example, we're drilling for a deeper target. Deeper target didn't work, but you had a shallow Paleocene target which had hydrocarbon. But you had some exploration focus on subtle traps. For example, Buzzard, the largest discovery in the North Sea in the last 20 years. That's a stratigraphic trap, and people were deliberately looking for something. It doesn't have much of a seismic anomaly. People have now visualized one, um, but we didn't feel that way at the time. But these things are high risk, even particularly if they don't have an anomaly. Even though they have an anomaly, there's still some risk. But they're becoming more important as structural traps are being drilled out. So thank you very much. Please like, please subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.